Welcome to Mechanic. Today here in Mechanic, we have a 2020 Honda Civic. And on this Honda Civic, we're going to go over how you replace this reservoir. This is for your windshield washer fluid. So to start with, this vehicle is raised up and supported on jack stands. It just gives you a little bit extra space. It is under, there's a few bolts and screws you may need to, you'll need to remove under the bottom. And also so you can move the tires to turn them right and left to be able to get some bolts out of the, um, the wheel well or the screws there to hold it in. So to start with, um, we've got it raised up. We've got the hood open to gain access to some uh, push clips that are up in the top to be able to remove those and to get ready. Then we can go down around the sides. So up here on the top, we're gonna have a good amount of various um, push clips to remove. And so we've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that just gets this little component up of this plastic piece and we can remove and set that to the side and set it behind us right so we set that over there and then once you've removed those then you would have one that's right here one that's in the center it's um right now i just have it in there but we have one that's in the center here that you would remove with this uh um, piece of the rubber molding and then another one that's right here on this side and that gets that component off and you'll do this on both sides. You have one push pin up here that you need to remove, and then that gets that free. And then um, you don't need to remove the other push pins here, unless you really want to. But we get this free, and then you want to pull on this, this piece of plastic here. We do that on both sides to be able to get this to um, come free. Alright, so if right here you pop this rubber up a little bit, there is a, an opening here where you can depress the little clip by pressing down on it. And what you're doing is you're pushing this clip down to be able to pull it out. Right, and now um, you can remove this and you can remove the one on the other side because it's going to be, um, you could leave it attached if you would like to, but it comes that it's sticking out here and you have a bigger per chance of breaking it off than uh, when you're removing the whole bumper itself. So we're gonna do that same concept to the other side and take that piece off and then we'll be even closer. So again, we have this. Now this one is just, has been just sitting on here, but the same thing, you would just remove this tab a little bit and you'll see I have a hole here to depress that little tab and it would be the same right down here. So like that you could remove this, but you just need to move the little rubber around. And now, be able to pull this plastic and set that aside. And now we have most of the top all free. I'm going to leave that one push pin right here in the middle, or we leave something here just to hold the middle of the bumper up while we remove the side components and the under portion. So this is going to work on both sides. Um, we have a screw here and another screw right here that um, this one would be a push pin a screw to attach to the, um, the the wheel well. This one is missing the wheel well. And so we have the one screw up here and then where the bottom of the bumper comes into the bottom of the wheel well, there will be some uh, bolts and or push pins. Um, I can't give you complete on that because that portion was never here so I don't know. So to remove that screw, it's just a fill up. And this is why it's good to have the uh, vehicle raised up a little bit. That way you can turn the steering wheel to gain better access to the screws that you may need to remove. Here. So we removed that one screw, and now this bumper, this side, will be able to come undone. So you can do the same on the other side, and that way you'll be able to free the bumper from the vehicle. Now, Onto the bottom, and I've already done that, but there's going to be a various amounts of push pins and or um, uh, there's these bolts that go down there. And they're a 10 millimeter bolt with a little shoulder piece so that they don't over tighten on the, uh, the rubber there. And there will be um, some of these that are down there that are attaching to the uh, underframe, the splash shield, and the, um, the wheel well liner also. 
So you would remove those from the bottom side and now you'll be able to start removing the bumper. So once you, you've done that, to be able to get the bumper to come off, you need to grab over here and be able to pull on the bumper and that unclips it from the side. And then there's a little bit of uh, some clips here that attach to the lights themselves. And then it'll pull back now, if you had fog lights, uh, this one doesn't, but if you had the fog lights, you would also need to be unhooking the electric that goes to the fog light. And I left this one push pin in here, it still will. I'm gonna do the same on this side, to open up this side, and then I'll remove that push pin and we'll be able to pull the whole bumper up. So we see the bumper is uh, free. It's just holding on by this one little um, push clip. So we'll remove that, supporting our bumper up so it doesn't just fall on the ground. And now to be able to grab and pull and remove the bumper from our vehicle, and then we can set that down. I want to pop the motor off and just let it sit there, and then we can undo these um, the lines that go up to the, uh, the nozzles, and they will come off the back there. But you know, if you have uh, fluid in here, you would want to try to recapture what you have. But the main reason why you'd be replacing this is because it's cracked and broken. And so that would be why you couldn't, uh, the fluid wouldn't be in here. So to start with, uh, the bolt has been removed. It has a uh, tender little bolt in there. You can go over and get a bolt right here. And then that will undo this one from the vehicle. And then we have a connection right up top here. You see this connection right here? This is where a lot of times your washer fluid will leak. And so you'll be able to fill up your washer fluid up until here. And then you might get um, leakage. And then we have just this pipe tube that comes up through here. So if you want to undo it all at the same time, you're going to want to undo these are the, the lines and go up to the top. And we just need to pull them through the little hole there. We're going to have the same thing right down through here. And that way, we have on down those. This, for the top, we have just a little plastic clip up there. And we have that little plastic clip that we just need to get a screwdriver and be nice and just kind of pop it out and get it to unclip from the uh, side there. And have to find that. But that frees this off from up top. Okay, so now we we'll need our number 10 millimeter to undo that. And we might as well unhook this motor by just pulling it out. And of course, we capture your, um, any fluid in there if you needed to. And then these um, lines that are on the side are actually pressed into the container itself. So we'll pull those out. that all from there. Undo the electric connector, which is where we just need to kind of push the top a little bit, get it to unlock, and that's uh, the motor unit all done. Undo these two 10 millimeter bolts, and then one more on the back side to remove this. Held on by three different bolts. So that's the two, and then third one. So we undo that third one, and now we just need to run this down and pull the whole unit out. Now, a lot of times you might just be buying this portion of the reservoir, and so because your filler neck still might be good, so it would just come undone right here. You just work it out there through that, that grommet there, and then you can still reuse this if you only needed to buy this portion. Like I said, it's a lot of times it leaks right here. You would take your, your new bottle or a good used one that you've tested and make sure that there's, it's not leaking. Or maybe you took this off to, to a, a glue a patch or whatnot. So the possible, possibilities to be able to repair this a little bit. So we'll take the new one We'd be able to feed that through. And you can you can do the filler neck from up top first and then connect it in here after you've after you've mounted this if you want.
There's a little tab on the bottom to help us line this bottom one up. Right, got that all snugged up on there. And so now we can go ahead and rerun the pump back where it goes. May, may put a little bit of lubricant on that if you need to. Uh, press that into place. Connect our electric connector. Run it back through there, that channel there. And now we take our, our lines here. Press them into the grooves on the back here. So we've got grooves that line up on the back here, and that's what we're doing. Just pressing it in all the way up. Do the same with the second one. All right, so those are up in the grooves there, and now there are just little clips up here where these lines sit in. Okay, so we've ran those lines. You go on the, uh, the front and the back side and kind of wrap around this. And now we'll be able to put the clip back in. Find that you can install the clip. With that black clip installed, everything is now um, locked in place where it's supposed to go. And so we can now add our windshield washer fluid. Add our windshield washer fluid back in, then you know you're gonna do your visual, make sure it's not leaking from anywhere. Those connections, and you're good to go. Thanks. So now we are going to put it back on for um, replacement. So you need to bring it up. And stay here, whether you use a screwdriver or uh, one of the push pins, just to hold the top in so that it doesn't fall down while you go around and maneuver the pieces where they need to be. There's a little shield piece down there that's to you know, direct the air through the uh, front mount intercooler. And so I had to move that a little bit on the front to be able to get that down. So you'll do this process on both sides and be able to get this up over this big clip here. And then I'm gonna line this up under the light there. Okay, so we have that uh, down through the, the rim here around the light where it needs to go. And then um, we have this lined up in the little channel grooves here. And we just press and stamp it in place. Um, this light you would need to put on. I'm missing it. That's setting there. Uh, there's one uh, Phillips screw that holds this on over here. One Phillips screw that holds it on at the top. There'll be another uh, push pin or screw that goes into the fender well, or the fender, the inner liner, and that inner liner is not there. So. so we've done that on this side. You need to just repeat that same process on the other side. Bring our bumper off. Okay, straight go around the light and situate in there. And then be able to line this up on this side with the tab. There we go. And then you got the one fill up screw that you would need to put in on this side. We have a various amount of uh, um, bolts and um, screws that would go on the bottom to hold that to the splash shield and to the vehicle on the bottom. So I will uh, do that and that's one good reason why you'd have your car kind of raised up a little bit and of course supported on jack stance. The other thing we want to get is we have still a little bit of piece of uh, 
plastic here and that um, rubber molding to put on, so we'll do that. Okay, so we've got this uh, plastic trim here. And it's gonna go on both sides. And we'll start in this side. We line it up just on top of the light, line it up, and then just press it to lock the clips. We'll have one push pin that's gonna go right there to lock that piece on. And then this sits down here. And this, we can put this push pin in here. And then we'll move and do the other side. And then we can put this piece on, the plastic piece that goes here, and put that push pin in there. Okay, so we got that uh, aligned around the uh, um, the light here. Just had to reset this portion of the bottom bumper to sit in there better. And then we have the stop one pressed in, and it's pressed in and locked in there. And so next we have there'll be one push pin that'll go up up top there, and we have the one push pin put in right here. So that secures the top of the bumper portion right there. And to do our final, we're gonna put this piece on and put the push the put the remainder of the push pins in. So we've got one more that goes down through that little uh, rubber cover right through the bumper and holds it on. Right there. And then we have nine that attach through here hold this on and the bumper in the arm. Okay. So we have all the, the push pins in, we have all but this one we push in and that one I gotta go find one. And two push pins on the outside wings of the, the headlights there. And then uh, like I said some uh, some bolts and push pins under the bumper down here, attached to the vehicle. You'll be able to keep that front of the bumper on. And that's how you would replace your front bumper on your 2020 Honda Civic. Thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.